Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of joined, being joined by my friend, Matt Schiffman. Matt, you're on the East Coast today, right? <laughs> yes, I am, and I am your co-host uh, also. Uh, it's the annual Thanksgiving weekend edition of Horse Center when there is so much really good racing around the country uh uh, just a couple weeks or so after the Breeders Cup um, uh, makes for good racing, and we're going to talk Friday's races, Brian. Yeah, we're doing Friday, Matt. Uh, of course, we wanted to do the Grade One Clark, uh, featuring Rich Strike, the Kentucky Derby winner, the uh, the upset Kentucky Derby winner. But we also found another very interesting race, I think, the Comely from Aqueduct featuring the return of uh, that very talented three-year-old filly, Kathleen O. And she faces a pretty tough field in New York on Friday. Matt, I went with a different intro for a change. I don't think I liked it. I'm going to go back to our normal way next week, if that's okay with you. <laughs> Thank goodness right. for Thanksgiving. <laughs> there you go. Here we go. We're going to start with the Clark. Let's look at the field, Matt. These are our HRN odds right now. We have Rich Strike as the nine to five favorite, Matt. Uh, what, part of me says, boy, this is a great one race and this horse has only one win other than maiden claiming. But on the other hand, if you look at his recent form, at least his last three races or four out of his last five races, you'd have to say Rich Strike is the horse to beat in this year's Clark, which is not a particularly strong grade one. No, not a particularly strong grade one. And there's been a lot of grumbling about the fat, about the quality of the field. And if Rich Strike does this or if Rich Strike does that and the Clark, doesn't it, you know, say a whole lot of stuff? You know, it, it's it's just where where we are in the racing calendar right now in today's world. The Breeders' Cup just happened. The, the big names are retiring to go to stud. And then other horses are... Uh, taking a little freshening to prepare for the Pegasus World Cup. So, you know, you get what you get in uh, uh, Thanksgiving weekend in November in the Clark. But, you know, yeah, the field is what it is. I think you've got some good handicap horses in here. Three of them are millionaires. No, it's not loaded with grade one winners, but I think it's a competitive field. I do agree with you that it's a competitive field. I, I don't agree that it is a, by any means, a normal kind of Thanksgiving Day holiday Clark. I've seen a lot of good Clarks uh, over the years, and, and this is not a real strong one. Also, people are talking about Rich Drake perhaps moving to the head of the class for the Eclipse Award race for the three-year-old championship. And I, I just don't believe that. And I'm, I'm going to get on my soapbox real quick here, Matt. It, it, not all grade one races are uh, created equally. And uh I, I think the races that Epicenter won, grade two races that Epicenter won, both a couple at Fairgrounds and at Saratoga, attracted stronger overall fields than did several other races where we're talking about horses like Taba and Cyberknife. And yes, Rich Strike, especially if Rich Strike wins this, or even if Taba wins the Malibu in December, which I'm not expecting a particularly strong addition of that grade one field. So my point is, don't just look at grade ones when you're deciding who should be the three-year-old champion. The correct answer is epicenter. Now let's get back to the Clark, Matt. Rich Strike is the horse to beat. He has very little speed. There's been a couple of races where he's shown a little bit more speed. I think this is a race overall, though, without a lot of speed in it. Yeah, I, I don't think it has really fast speed in it, but I think it does have, uh, you know, a couple or two or three horses that prefer to do their running out uh, on the front end. And and I see you put the Timeform U.S. pace projector up on the screen, uh, which is saying that, uh, you know, horses like uh, Injunction and Trademark are likely to be out front. And, and yeah, I don't think that's going to have a lot of effect on Rich Strike. We know how Rich Strike runs. He's a deep closer, and, and that's the way it is, and he's going to do that in here. And when you are a deep closer, you're, you're, you know, you're dependent on a good trip. You're dependent a little bit on the pace. So, um, uh, but, yeah, there's there we are uh, uh, with the pace projector, Rich Strike, number four, uh, uh, in the back of the field, along with uh, Folsom. 
Yeah, we think the uh, the folks at Timeform US do a very good job, and, and we wanted to throw that up there. Although I disagree a little bit, it has West Will Power sitting on the outside in third. I think West Will Power could show more speed in this yeah. Clark Matt. He's coming off a big win last time when he went wire to wire in the grade two Fayette at Keeneland. I think West Will Power uh, is a horse who, despite his age, is is still uh, maturing and still getting better. I think he's better than ever. He's come back with three good races, one better than the other. And uh, if he can repeat that Clark, I, I think he offers a big threat to the three-year-old Rich Strike, who is coming off of a, a fourth in the Travers, a second in the Lucas Classic, and a, and a pretty darn good fourth in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Yeah, you know, and and, and the, all, those three races that you mentioned since the – the Kentucky Derby are commendable to Rich Strike and and ran in strong fields, ran in fields that are, you know, obviously better overall than this field. And and I think for all those reasons, uh, he will be the favorite. And a lot of people, certainly the, the band of Rich Strike fans, expect a victory. Yeah, they do expect a victory, uh, and, and maybe they'll get one because he is certainly dropping in class, even though it's another grade one race. The Breeders' Cup Classic, he had some trouble when Alpha Center was pulled up on the backstretch, and he was not all that far from horses like Taba and uh, Olympiad, I should say, first, and Taba uh, for second, uh, well behind Flightline, of course, but uh, everybody's been well behind Flightline. Rich Strike, the horse to beat. West Will Power looks like the horse that he's most likely to get the job done. I think he'll show plenty of speed in here. Uh, they have horses like Injunction and Trademark in there. Injunction is kind of an interesting speed horse, Matt, in that he is also a horse who, who's not a youngster, but he seems to be uh, getting better and better. And if you look at his last couple of races, you'd have to at least consider him as a horse out there on the front end. Yeah, I think so, Brian. He was second uh, in the ACAC, and he won uh, the Cowboy Jones. It's an overnight stake at uh, Ellis Park in August, and there are a few other, a couple other horses in this field that ran behind uh, Injunction in that race. Yeah, West Will Power was actually one of them, but I think West Will Power is building up. That was West Will Power's first race back in Junction. Beat him and then did run a good race in the ACAC. He's another one we expect out on the lead. Now, the time form you asked Pace Projector had trademark out there. I'm not sure I'm buying it, but that three-year-old, uh, he's had plenty of chances and stakes opportunities, but the last allowance win in Keeneland was good enough where they want to give him at least one more chance against the big boys. Yeah, and also I've seen that uh, trainer Vicki Oliver is talking about, um, depending on what the weather forecast uh, comes up with, is considering running uh, uh, running trademark in the Commonwealth, uh, which is a turf race. He's not a turf horse, but she's hoping that the race will come off of the turf, which I think, you know, not much moisture will cause that to happen. So she's kind of uh, uh, waiting to see and hoping to to maybe get a break and catch a small field in and off the turf thing. So um, we'll have to see even, even if Trademark does go in the Clark. Yeah, I'm not expecting them to be off the turf. The weather here in Louisville doesn't look like we'll get that much rain okay. uh, for Friday. Yeah, uh, on Clark Day. So we'll see. Uh, trademark, uh, probably a long shot in here, and deservedly so, but he is coming off a very nice win at Keeneland. Some others we haven't talked about, Matt. We need to talk about Proxy, because Proxy is a horse who has yet to win a stakes race, but he's run a, in a lot of very good races. He's faced yeah. a lot of very good horses, and he's been a consistent rallier into the picture. This will be his first race in a while, though. Yeah, uh, we remember Proxy from the Kentucky Derby Trail in 2021, um, where he, you mentioned it, ran well, but didn't win uh, in the the Derby Trail races at Fairgrounds. And yeah, third in the Stephen Foster, second in the Blame, third in the Ben Ally, you know, all quality races and, and top three finishes. Um, certainly, uh he would have to have a significant breakthrough to win uh, the Clark, but got to consider him for another one of the, another top three. Things. 
Yeah, I do. Uh, I do actually consider him quite a bit in here. Uh, uh, trainer uh, Michael Stidham uh, has him off of a, uh, what is it, a four or five month layoff here coming out of the Stephen Foster. By the way, that grade two Stephen Foster this uh, early this uh, year at uh, Churchill Downs, I think is a stronger overall race than this grade one, the Clark. Um, he rallied. He rallied pretty strongly. He wasn't near the uh, the winner per se, but he it was a good rallying third behind horses like Olympiad and American Revolution. So I, I think if he can come back with a race like that, he he has a real shot. Another thing about Proxy Matt is uh, last time he ran fresh. Last time he ran off of an even longer layoff, yes. he came back pretty darn sharp. So that's another thing to watch with Proxy. Who haven't we mentioned? Folsom. Has won a bunch of stakes races. He's another Brad Cox. Westwood Power being the first trained by Brad Cox. Folsom, another Brad Cox who's won a bunch of stakes races. And last Samurai uh, was a nice winner of the Oaklawn uh, Park Handicap earlier this year. Yeah, look at Folsom's record, Brian. 16 career starts, eight wins, two seconds and a third, over a million dollars in, in earnings. Um, hey, you know, again, uh, uh, not a grade one winner, but but top, top three finishes, won the West Virginia three, um, was actually entered in the Keeneland sale uh, that just passed, but uh, the, the Judge Mark withdrew him from that sale. Interesting. And, and, and Folsom is one of those horses. I, I put the pace projector up again because you see can see Folsom projected back there with Rich Strike and Proxy ahead of them early. So that it's interesting if that comes true. But anyway, Folsom's a horse who seems to really do well when it's uh, just a little bit lower level. And, and he seems to be a horse who likes to win when the level's a little bit lower. But I don't trust him quite at this level, even though I said this is a low grade one. And Last Samurai just hasn't been as good since that uh, win at Oakland Park. And, and probably that came against a little cheaper. Uh, West Will Power certainly dominated him last time at Keeneland, so I'm not sure why he will turn the tables. But like you said, Matt, it's an interesting seven-horse field uh, as Rich Strike takes on older horses here. Rich Strike is the headliner. Rich Strike is the horse that most people be, will be watching. I expect him to be the favorite, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what Matt and I pick a little bit later in the show because right now we're going to jump over to the comely mad and and just like the uh clark i think it uh, has a has a headliner and then it has an interesting feel to face that headliner the headliner of course being kathleen O. kathleen O is a good looking daughter of upstart matt who won her first four races impressively she came to the kentucky oaks as one of the horses to beat but things did not work out for her that day at churchill downs yeah for uh, for Shug McGahee, uh, like you said, uh, one at first asking, which is not something that is th that is that common with uh, Shug down in Florida. Won four in a row, won two Grade Two races at Gulfstream, the Gulfstream Park Oaks, the uh, Devona Day, uh, which which sent her on uh, the Kentucky Oaks, and we know what a stacked field that Kentucky Oaks. Uh, uh, was her, um, things didn't go her way. Obviously, something uh, went awry a little bit, and she has been off since uh, the Kentucky Oaks. And normally, I would, you know, be a little more concerned about that with a horse from Shug's Barn uh, coming off a layoff. But like I said before, she came out running in her debut. Yeah, I, I, I think this is an interesting um, an interesting comparison in, in a few ways to the Clark. Again, you have a horse here who looks like she just has a little bit more class, has been keeping a little bit better company than the rest. Although maybe it was just the Kentucky Oaks where she kept better company. But uh, yeah, that, that that's now a layoff of over six months. So you got to wonder. I also wonder about the nine furlongs of the Cumley. I don't see a ton of pace in here, Matt. We're going to look at the pace projection again for this race, but I don't see a ton of pace. And for a filly to be off for six and a half months and probably a deeper field than you might have expected for this grade three Cumley, uh, I, I think it's a tough spot. She certainly could win just on her talent and class alone. And as you say, she was a debut winner. 
and that debut win came at uh, at Aqueduct last fall in a sprint. So a talented Philly, but I, I think there's a lot to talk about here. Let's take a quick look at that pace projection, and you'll see that Kathleen O is near the back of the field, but number four there early. Early on, they say the uh, the lead should uh, come to either Falconet or Tizzy in the sky, the two outside Phillies here, Matt, in the, uh, in the Cumley. Yeah, Brian. And again, I think uh, uh, similar to what we said about the Clark, uh, these are a couple of horses that prefer to do their work on the front end, not necessarily blazing, uh, blazing speed from them. Tizzy in the sky uh, uh, is from the barn of Jose is, is named to be the rider. Um, one is one her last two starts, both of them it in the Belmont at the Big A meeting, uh, a maiden special, win, and then an allowance um, after two second places during the summer. This is a step up, though, Brian, in my eyes for this horse. Oh, absolutely! Tizzy in the Sky is a promising filly. Uh, uh, a daughter of Sky Kingdom, she's had four races, and she was very good in running uh, second in her first two races, both sprints at Belmont and Saratoga, before she got to Aqueduct and absolutely dominated a one-mile allowance race, and then a nine furlong win over the track. But uh, those fields were light, very light in comparison to what I'm calling a very good grade three here in the Comley. So Tizzy in the Sky certainly will get an acid test, but uh, she's not only an interesting filly for how good she may become, but she's also an interesting filly with a race without a lot of speed, that she is one of the speed horses. The other one is Falconet, Matt. I, I, I think there's a lot to like about Falconet as well. Falconet, um, very well-bred daughter of Uncle Mo for trainer uh, uh, Todd Fletcher. She's a, a daughter of Bird at the Wire, who was a a very nice graded stakes filly. In fact, one of my friends uh, was uh, was an owner, one of the owners of Bird at the Wire. So he has a big interest in Falconet. And I think Falconet has a big shot in here saying, uh, partly because there's just not a lot of speed. And Falconet's not a, not a speed ball by any uh, stretch, but she's been running very good races. She graduated nicely to uh, a stakes company. And while she couldn't quite get the job done in either the Iowa Oaks or the Seneca overnight at Churchill last time, those two stakes performances are, are pretty darn good. If she can just take a step forward, I think Falconet could be tough in here. Yeah, I agree. Certainly the way the Todd Pletcher barn has been going recently, uh, whether it's in the Breeders' Cup or down in Kentucky or just at Aqueduct, uh, they have been doing really good things. I, I read gets on board and, and Irad uh, looking to close out the year with a record number of uh, stakes wins for the, for the year um, somewhere up in the, in the upper seventies for the year. So, you know, if Irad's going on the horse, you know, that uh, uh, he thinks he's got a shot in there. Um, Certainly Falconet, in my eyes, has a little bit more class than Tizzy in the sky in terms of those two out on the front end. Yeah, and interesting. I put that pace projector back up from Timeform US, Matt, and interesting. It's the I, it's the Ortiz brothers uh, there that are expected to be on the lead. Um, looking at the field again, though, oh, by the way, I, I believe that's the late Garrett Gomez's record that I read Ortiz is yes. uh, chasing with that uh, uh stakes record uh matt there's a lot of other horses to talk about let's let's start near the inside with 63 caliber because 63 caliber trained by tom amos a daughter of gun runner has won four of her last five races in the last race she beat falconette who you already know i like quite a bit uh it was it was a good race at churchill downs in that seneca overnight but 63 caliber beat her four out of five I think she'll still have some decent odds in here. Why not 63 caliber? Yeah, and I like uh, her running style. She's uh, she's a stalker presser uh, uh, type of running style, and you know, and quite frankly, as one who pays close attention to racing in New York on a daily basis, um, overall, it has been pretty hard to close from particularly far back. Um, on the main track at Aqueduct. So uh, uh, 
the right kind of running style. And as you mentioned, uh, uh, several wins uh, uh, for trainer Tom Amos, who we know it, uh, is based down in Kentucky, Indiana, but it, it spends summers at Saratoga. So he is not a stranger uh, picking spots um, on the Naira circuit. Yeah, certainly not. And 63 caliber looks like a nice filly. I, for some reason, I have it in my head that I think Falconet has a bigger ceiling than 63 caliber, but I could be wrong with that. Uh, and, and that was a tough race that they came out of. Uh, they've had some time, both of them, since that race. And I, and I think that race uh, uh, could be a key race as we look at the comely here, Matt. Uh, another horse we certainly need to talk about is Nostalgic. Now, Nostalgic was a impressive winner of the grade three gazelle as a prep for the Kentucky Oaks. Uh, that came at Aqueduct, that came at nine furlongs. Uh, she ran in several big races against the best fillies in the division. She even tried really tough turf fillies once and, and things did not go her way. I think she's proven that she's not quite a grade one filly yet, but Nostalgia came back recently with another race at Aqueduct, another grade three, this time against older horses. She ran quite well in the turn back the alarm. Yes, she did. And, and as you mentioned, uh, um, she's getting a little bit of class relief here in terms of the, the, the quality of the field, maybe not quite as much as trainer uh, Bill Mott would have liked to have gotten. Uh, but we know Mott, he's always willing to take a shot with his horses. Uh, um, it's not the Kentucky Oaks. It's not the CCA Oaks. It's not the Alabama. But uh, yeah, he, he uh, she had a really nice... Uh, off the pace move in the turn back and the turn back the alarm at aqueduct in her last start and i think just came up uh neck short yeah it, it was a good effort um I, I think this might be an even tougher grade three even though it's against three-year-olds it's just a stacked grade three field of three-year-olds in here but that was a promising effort probably got her a little bit more confidence and her two best efforts are nine furlongs at aqueduct so nostalgic certainly horse to watch we look at that pace projector again, Matt. I, I kind of feel like this is the story of uh, of four fillies who want to be on or near the lead. As you said, not speed balls, but uh, certainly Falconet and Tizzy is the sky we already mentioned. And then uh, a long shot from Parks, Pistol, Liz, a blazing, and 63 caliber from the inside should also show some early pace. But then you got four horses who really don't want to be near the lead. Maybe nostalgic of the four ralliers is the one that can get first jump. I'm not sure. Uh, but I would expect her maybe to have a little bit more early sharpness than some of the others who include Scratch Cat, uh, a, a long shot who is running a lot of good races for Phil Bauer and shouldn't be discounted here. And then you got Morning Matcha, Matt, who who ran a very good race to be second in the grade one cotillion last time. Yeah, Morning Matcha shipping up from uh, Parks for trainer Butch Reed. And, and he, he's a frequent uh, shipper from Parks with his better horses up to Naira to race in, uh, in, in stakes races. And you mentioned that, uh, that really, really good second place finish in the Cotillion. Uh, in this field, uh, Morning Matcha uh, is the most experienced filly with uh, uh, 16 career starts and uh you know almost all top three finishes four wins five seconds four thirds uh, uh over six hundred thousand in earns uh along with the second in the cotillion had a third in the catherine sophia at parks uh this horse is in good form and, and is a competitor yeah, she's in good form and she's a competitor. But on the other hand, I, I I don't necessarily love her graded stakes performances in that she doesn't really look like she's ever come very close to actually winning. She's a filly who likes to come from off the pace and has kind of picked up the pieces for me anyway, more than anything. Certainly, even that second in the cotillion, she was way back, never, never threatened the winner society that day. But she beat some very good fillies to rally for a second. So a similar performance could put her in here with a shot. And it's interesting that Reed is the trainer of the long shot on the rail, Pistol Liz a Blazing. Maybe that means Pistol Liz a Blazing shows even more early speed than we expect to uh, possibly set the table for Morning Matcha. But that could set the table for Nostalgic or certainly Kathleen O or maybe even Scratch Cat as well. It's, a, it's an interesting field from top to bottom, Matt. 
I'm excited uh, about Kathleen O returning. She's working well for trainer Shug McGahee. Um, utmost respect for McGahee at developing horses. She was so good early on in her career. We still don't know how good she is. Her one shot at grade one, probably a, a, a slightly tough trip in that big field in the Kentucky Oaks. She got beat only four lengths. So uh, I'm excited to see what she can become. But on the other hand, Matt, I, I think this is a difficult spot for her in that she hasn't raced in a while. Not a ton of speed, nine furlongs. It, it, it wants to make me take a shot against a pretty clear favorite. Yeah, it makes sense, Brian. All right, Matt, it's time. It's time we go to our top picks here for a couple good races. There, there are a lot of good races we could have chosen, but these were the two that Matt and I were most interested over the holiday weekend. Uh, certainly good races at Del Mar as well and others at Aqueduct and Churchill, for instance. But uh, we like the Clark. We like the uh, 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 Comley. We like Rich Strike. We like Kathleen. Oh, but are they our top picks? Matt, I'm going to let you go first. Who do you like best in the Clark? Yeah, it was an interesting race to handicap, Brian. Uh, um, and we talked about all the reasons that uh, Rich Strike is... is a worthy favorite in here, but uh, I kind of uh, was attracted a little bit to the seven horse uh, West Will Power. I, I for uh, for Brad Cox, uh, the the last uh, the last two races have been very good. Now as a five year old, I get a little bit of a feeling. I, I'm not saying that West Will Power is the next Nick's go. I am not saying that, but I get a little bit of Nick's go feeling here uh, with this Brad Cox runner as one that is, is coming into uh, his own in his recent races as Nick's go did later on in his career. That's the comparison that I'm making. And maybe Brad Cox has got the keys to unlock uh, things with, uh, uh, West will power and he'll be my top pick in the car. Yeah. And, and I'm going to agree with you folks that are uh, watching can see those are listening. Yes, I agree with Matt. West will power is also my top pick. Uh, he showed flashes of talent, uh, as a, as, as a three-year-old and a four-year-old and, and it just for physical reasons and, and maybe maturity reasons, he just never was quite there, but I really like his progression of three races since he's come back this year each one better than the last. And I, I think a repeat kind of performance, maybe he doesn't get as easy a lead as he did in the Thad, but a repeat kind of performance makes him the one to beat, not the favorite Rich Strike in the Clark. I also think he's a, a horse who can either take the lead early or sit just off it. He's equally comfortable doing either. With a race without a lot of pace, I like Wes Will Power best in the Clark. Matt, uh, we're going to go to the Comley, and there is a, much like the Clark, there's the clear favorite we talked about, Kathleen O. I see that uh, you are on the Kathleen O bandwagon coming back in the Comley. Yeah, I am, Brian. I, I, you know, and looking at the field, I just felt like the class edge that Kathleen O has is significant enough, coupled with the fact that... Uh, she came out running um, earlier in her debut, so maybe Shug will be able to have her ready to go again. We shall see. Um, so I'm going to go with uh, Kathleen O. I liked her uh, uh, when she was on her winning streak, and so we'll see what happens. I won't be surprised if, if she comes up a little short, but I was having trouble landing on any one of the other horses in particular, you came up with an alternative though. Yeah, it's interesting you say that, Matt, because let's, first of all, as a fan, I'm, I am rooting for Kathleen O to win this race. I think Kathleen O could have championship potential as we move forward to a four-year-old year in 2023. But as a better, I, I just see too many things here coming back after a long layoff. Yeah, there's class, and she ran pretty well in the Kentucky Oaks. But if you throw out the Kentucky Oaks, I, I don't know that she has a class edge here. So it's yet to be completely determined for me whether she does have a class edge, if you follow that reasoning. Um, the other thing is coming back in two turns, a race without a lot of pace, and a bunch of good three-year-old fillies in here. It, it's a spot for me to take a shot to beat her as, as a handicapper and a better. 
But what you said, you, you couldn't land on anyone. It, yeah, it's a little difficult because I like a bunch of other Phillies. Uh, but I think Falconet has 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 an upside. Falconet is a Philly who's just been slowly getting better uh, with each start. She's always been good. Five races, she's never been worse than second. She's had two stakes opportunities already where she ran well in both. I think she, like West Will Powers, a Philly that can win on the lead or or just off it. And I think that's a good place to be here in this come late on on Friday. So I went with Falconet, Irad Ortiz. Yeah, that 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 doesn't hurt either. But uh, nostalgic is very interesting with those good races at Aqueduct. Uh, certainly uh, the horse that beat Falconet, uh, 63 caliber. Not to mention a few others here would not surprise me in the come late. So I'm I'm rooting for Kathleen O, but I want to bet against her as the favorite in the come. Late. Those are our top picks, folks. Hopefully they help you win some money. This holiday weekend, uh, all over the country, we decided the Clark and the Comley Mad, and uh, those should be two fun races to watch. Let's get a parting shot from you, my friend. Yeah, I want to wish uh, all of our Horse Center fans uh, and, and everybody in racing a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, enjoy the racing. Enjoy your time uh, on Thanksgiving. Enjoy the turkey. Enjoy your family and uh, the time off from work. And as always. Thanks for watching the show. Yeah, thank you for watching the show, folks. Have a very happy Thanksgiving. We're uh, uh, tickled pink that you continue to watch us here every week on Horse Center. Matt and I love doing the show for you. I want to thank uh, Candace Curtis for uh, all our race graphics. We appreciate that. Time Form US for the pace projections. Derby Wars, the best contest site out there as our sponsor. Thank you to all of them. But most of all, thanks for watching, folks. We'll be back next week with a show led by the Cigar Mile at Aqueduct. We'll see you then right here on another edition of Horse Center.